book two, section 10, line two-ish or so. And uh, when, he, when he says when someone's angry, he seems to turn his back on the reason with a certain kind of pain and with an unconscious contraction of the heart. But when someone does so desires that an overpowered pleasure, he somehow seems more self-indulgent and more unmanly in his wrong mood. Right, right. Some may be like, oh, was, if you do what is bad stoic thing, you're all of a sudden less of a man of some sort. Okay, so I think that's the same kind of thing. Okay, but let's, uh, thank you for calling your attention to that one. Can you summarize for me what the philosophical argument in that, in that uh, one is? Yeah, so, uh, do you want me to read the rest of the section? Or? Instead of reading it, try to try to just summarize what the philosophical okay. point so, that it's getting at is. All right. So what Marcus does here is he uh, compares compares two wrongdoings. Wrongdoings done out of anger, and wrongdoings done out of desire. And of the two, he says wrongdoings done out of desire is worse. Simply so because things done out of desire are are done of your own accord and mm -hmm. driven through what you do by your desire. Whereas things by anger are result of like say you've been pained at first or as we know anger is a more of an irrational thing that happens not because you know you're thinking straight or because you want you know something to happen. So interestingly I think opposite of Seneca where Seneca feels anger is the worst because it's irrational and controllable. It really feels the opposite because anger is irrational, the rational wrongdoing is worse. Okay, very good. Very nice solid contribution to the discussion there. Okay. So um, first of all how does this observation and this argument stand with respect to orthodox, old-school Greek Stoicism? Um, I feel that it maybe shouldn't mind as much, because shouldn't all wrongdoings be the same? Yeah. Aren't they all yeah. equal? Isn't yeah, so it feels all, all feels kind of, equally bad? Yeah, so it feels kind of counterintuitive to like... He even, said, he even says like in the first, um, uh, actually no, he uh, refers to, what's the name, Theophrastus? Yes. He says, in, uh, he says, oh, this man's speaking like a true philosopher when he compares wrongdoings as people rather commonly do make such comparisons, which, feel, which feels kind yes. of odd because it's very against the, like, the equality of all wrongdoings. Exactly correct. Now, Theophrastus was Aristotle's pupil, um, and he's said to be a true philosopher here. And so we're doing something that, that I think the reference to Theophrastus signals, okay, this isn't an orthodox stoic point, but there seems to be some point to that, that if I'm doing wrongdoing because of a desire, that's coming from me, and, and it seems more volitional, so I'm more responsible for it, so it's worse if it's happening, whereas if I'm reacting in anger, the cause of that is, is external to me, okay, and I'm, I'm reacting to it, okay? Uh, and so I'm not entirely responsible for it. The object of my anger is more responsible for it. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> anybody else want to comment on how this observation stands with respect to the orthodox view of Stoics? Yes. Well, I thought the orthodox view was that anger is a form. A desire? Very good, exactly what I'm getting at. Okay, so what is the implication of that for this? I guess the... What causes the, fe the feeling of desire is also more important when it comes to evaluating which vice is worse or which action to take. I'd say both are equally bad in terms of outcome, but in terms of the the process, I guess, acting out of your own will instead of being led to that price is worse. Yes, but um, the problem is that if anger just is a form of desire, then there's no distinction to be made here. Okay? I mean, it's not that things caused by anger can be considered different and therefore worse or better than things caused by desire, because anger is defined as a desire. Okay? So, so what is happening? Can we still salvage anything? Okay, anger is a kind of desire, and it has a certain kind of object. Somebody um, trips me uh, while I'm walking in the street, and that angers me. Okay? Versus, um, 
I see a really attractive person and I have a, a, an erotic desire towards them, or I see a, a, a why don't I change the example a little bit, a wonderful chocolate cake, and I, <laughs> and, and that object is really making me want, you know, want to break my diet or whatever. Okay, so in both case, I mean, as, as, as we analyze what's happening there with this theory of emotion, both of them have objects that are causing desires, and there's a question about whether there is control of a desire. And so this doesn't, this, 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 this can't really work with Stoicism. It, 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 you'd have to redefine anger, and maybe this makes sense because not everybody was shocked when I, I, I tricked everyone by getting you to define anger and nobody said it's a form of desire, but then I showed you five different definitions that Seneca himself gives, all, every one of which is that it's a desire for something. Right, go ahead. I mean, isn't there a difference though when what triggers my emotion is like an inanimate object versus another person? Because I wouldn't be angry at something that, I mean, I wouldn't want revenge on a chocolate cake. In, in contrast to having like a desire for chocolate cake. Um, well, and, and you shouldn't get angry also at your car not starting, but you do. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not sure that that distinction is going to um, hold up. I think desires are, in the paradigm case, for people, sexual interaction, and anger is, is with respect to people, and both of these are social issues. And so that would be nice if we could easily say, oh, but uh, uh, desire is always just for things like cakes and inanimate objects, and so it's not as bad as um, this special kind of desire, anger, which is always focused on people, because there's a very important class of desires, as Dylan might well explain to us, that relates to, to other people. Okay, other points about this? Laura and then Boone? Um, you could spin it to be stoic by kind of talking about the causal structure. So like something happened that caused a response. So the structure is rational because it was cause and effect. So even though the emotion might be, I don't know, desire or extreme, um, the rationality isn't in the emotion itself, it's in what caused the emotion. And then you could also make it stoic by saying mm -hmm. that when you're angry, you acknowledge your anger, and that could be a form of an overly twisted way of mindfulness, because it's seeing, <laughs> um, it's like acknowledging your emotion and realizing that it's there, and once you realize that it's there, you could change it. In, 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 in both cases, you're saying. Because you're, you're, yeah. you're quite right that we, it's wrong to focus on objects. Because one thing we know from Stoicism is it's not objects that borrow, bother us. It's our beliefs about objects that bother us. OK, but does that, does that, are you saying that applies more to one than the other? That, that there is, it's, our beliefs are more important, say, in the case of anger than they are in the case of desires? Um, I think they apply to both. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Boone? Uh, yeah, I think that when he kind of refers to anger, it's kind of as an impulse rather than as a desire, so I feel that he might want to use different words when expressing it. Because when I read it, I thought that, uh, you know, you're given an, an impulse, like if someone slaps you in the face, you're going to get angry. And that's like an impulse that kind of gives to you involuntarily. I, I would assume that, you know, you get upset for something like that. And it's the, it's the action or the desire to do something about that that uh, is anger, the, the proper form of anger, but I don't think he's trying, trying to say that. I think he's trying to say that the initial, the initial impulse that you get is, is uh, what he's trying to say. The, okay, the, the initial, okay, but let's, let's use technical terms here, because initial impulse has this technical meaning of what we are 
oriented towards. In the Epicurean view, pleasure. In the Stoic view, maintenance, self maintenance of the kind of thing we are, rational beings once we're seven or 14. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that impulse is the correct uh, term. I think you're talking about the object. Yeah. OK, but, but in both cases, the structure is there's a certain kind of object. Then there's a belief about that object. And then there is a reaction when that object coincides with that that belief. Um, but so you you think there is a significance in the different kind of object. And certainly there is a difference between somebody tripping you and somebody um, putting a chocolate cake on the table. Uh, so we can't get too metaphysically reductionist about this. But it seems to me difficult to say that the kind of vice caused by chocolate cakes is not as bad as the kind of vice caused by um, tripping or something like that. Uh, go ahead. I mean, in any case, isn't a Stoic supposed to have control over their anger anyway? So I, I, I guess I don't understand like why Marcus Aurelius wants to make this, this it seems unstoic to make the distinction. I, I think it's because anger causes bigger, um, I think, I think we have a tendency to think that anger is worse because it causes bigger problems for people. And then so there's a philosophical point that's kind of interesting and kind of counterintuitive that says actually desire is worse. I mean, it's not a big problem for me if people are eating chocolate cake and violating their diets, but if they're doing battle on the street, that could be a problem for me. And so we perceive anger to be a bigger problem. And yes, yes, you're breaking your diet, but as long as you're not one of these guys that flies off the handle or something, I can live with you. Um, so I, I, it's not clear to me why he wants to make that distinction, but this actually resembles, as, as you pointed out, um, Seneca making anger. You know, all vices are equal, yes, and there's lots of passages of Seneca with him going on about the equality of all vices, but then there's also some vices are more equal than others, it turns <laughs> out. Um, and, and anger is really the most inhuman and the most ugly and the most despicable and the most problematic and the most in urgent need of being addressed and things like that, which makes it out to be like it's worse. So it looks like there's a kind of at least Roman Stoic topos about anger being um, uh, being worse and then this is this is sort of counteracting that so maybe maybe if you bought into this you would see more about the equality of these vices you think that anger is so much worse than desire but I'll give you a way to look at it where desire is worse than anger and where that all ends up is that Vice is really a bad thing, even if it looks prettier in one case, it's all pretty bad. Yeah. 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 Ye